Hello everyone, so this is lecture six. In this lecture, we're going to talk about vectors, but in three-dimensional case. Um, so hopefully at the end of this lecture, you could be able to describe three-dimensional space mathematically and locate points in space. We need to learn that first before we move on to vectors. Um, and of course, you could be able to perform vector operations in three-dimensional cases. Um, so all the vector operations that you learn in the 2D case um, in the last lecture could be um, could be very similar to what we're going to do in this case. Um, that is, you can do scalar multiplications, vector additions, vector difference, um, and also calculate the magnitude, the unit vector of a three-dimensional vector. And we're going to write the equation for simple plans and spheres in three-dimensional case. Um, eventually, we get to a uh, to a lecture when we talk more deeply in uh, and more detailed in how to write an equation of a line in three dimensions and equation of a plane in three dimensions. But here in this lecture, we're going to write the equation of a simple plane. Um, all right, so first, let's look at the three dimensional coordinate system. So, so far, I mean, up to this point, uh, you learned about two dimensional plane or XY plane, or if you locate a point on the 2D plane, you just have one com two components, the X component and the y component. Now when you move on to three-dimensional coordinate system, that is, this is still a rectangular coordinate system, but instead of two perpendicular axes, now you have three perpendicular axes, including the x-axis, the y-axis, and now you have the third axis, which is the z-axis. Because each axis is the number line representing all real numbers in R, so R is real line, uh, or real numbers for that matter, the three-dimensional system is often denoted by R3. Right, so for 2D plan we usually denote as R2, but three-dimensional system or 3D space we often denote it by R3. And a point in three-dimensional space is represented as x y and z so x is the first component y is the second component and z the third component unlike a 2d plant in 3d space you not only have the x y plane consists of the x axis the y axis and all the values in that plant um, you have the combinations of x and z which is uh, the xz plane and the combinations of yz and that is the yz plane and each plan is described using the following notations for the xy plan. It consists of all the points of the form x, y, 0. For x and y is in R. x is a real number, y is also a real number. And you usually describe the x, y plan as simply as z equal to 0. Now for the xz plan, this is the plan that consists of all the points of the form x0, z, given that x and z are real numbers. And we can describe the xz plan as simple as uh, y equal to 0. Similarly, for the yz plan, this is the plan consists of all the points of the form 0, y, z, for y and z are real numbers. And y, z plan can be described using the formula x equal to 0. So to locate a point in space is not a straightforward procedure, um, but it's not too difficult either. So let's take a look at the three-dimensional space here where x-axis is uh, um, in this direction, the y-axis is in the horizontal directions, and the z-axis is in the vertical directions. Um, so by default, um, the x-axis moving in this direction is the positive directions, the y-axis moving from left to right is the positive directions, and the z-axis moving from the bottom up is going to be the positive directions. Now, to sketch the point in 3D space, we're going to do the following procedure. 
So first, let's consider the point x, y, and z for x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 2, and z is equal to 3. We're going to start with the x value. So when x is equal to 1, what you do is you start at the origin and go out in the positive directions of x, because x in this case is equal to 1. Now from 1, you're going to draw the line that is parallel to the y-axis, but you go to the left of y because y is going to be negative 2 in this case. So this line is going to be parallel to the y-axis. Now from the y-axis, you count up to 2 units to the left, right? so 1, 2, and you draw a line that is parallel to the x-axis. So I'm going to use a different color here. So this purple line is going to be parallel to the x-axis. And you want to draw the two lines, uh, the purple line and the blue line, such that the two lines intersect at one point. And that point is going to be 1, negative 2, 0, because we haven't talked about the z-axis yet. So let me redraw re the blue line here. And they meet at one point, and that point is going to be 1, negative 2, 0. Now, after doing this, what you do next is from the origins, you draw a line, connect the origins with the point 1, negative 2, 0. So I'm going to use red in this case. And from this line, you have two endpoints, one at the origin and the other one is at 1, negative 2, 0. At the origins, you go up to 3 units because z in this case is equal to 3. And you're going to be at this point. And from this point in the z-axis on the z-axis, you're going to draw the line that is going to be parallel to the red line right here. And then you're going to draw a vertical line starting from the point 1, negative 2, 0. And the vertical line going to intersect the pink line at one point. And that is going to be the point that we're looking for. That is 1, negative 2, 3. So this procedure is that we need to first locate the point on the xy plane, right? So that is the point 1, negative 2, 0. And then you're going to, from the point 1, negative 2, 0, you're going to lift it up to the z-axis so that it, you know, um, it account for the height z equal to 3. But we have to follow that pr the procedure because, as you can see, the three-dimensional space or the axis kind of tilted a little bit. By following the procedure, we make sure that our point is in the right spot vertically. Okay, so that's how you get the point 1, negative 2, uh, comma 3. Now let's try another point, the point negative 2, 3, and negative 5. So you have the value of x, y, and z. In this case, the value of x is equal to negative 1. So you start at the origins and you go back to the, uh, and you move along the x-axis in the negative directions. So this is negative 1, negative 2 right here. And from negative 2 on the x-axis, you draw a line that is going to be parallel to the y-axis, but you draw in the um, from left to right because the y value is going to be positive 3. So you just draw the line like this. And now on the y-axis, when y equal to 3, you draw a line from y equal to 3 that is going to be parallel to the x-axis. And this line going to intersect the blue line at one point, and that point is going to be the point negative two, three, comma zero. Again, we haven't talked about the height or the z value yet. Okay. Uh, so after identifying negative two, three, and zero, you draw a line from the origins to that point, and you get that one in red. 
and the new like segment connecting the origin with the point negative 2, 3, and 0 have two ends. One end is at the origin and the other end is at negative 2, 3, and 0. At the origin, you go down to the z-axis by 5 units because z is equal to negative 5 in this case. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And from this negative 5, you're going to draw a line that is going to parallel to the red line um, in this case. Okay, so I'm going to use pink for the drawing. And then from the point negative 2, 3, and 0, you're going to draw a line that's going to parallel to the z axis. And this line is going to intersect the pink one at the point, and that point is going to be negative 2, 3, negative 5. And that is how you locate the point in 3D space. Again, you have to follow this procedure um, because we want to make sure that our point uh, is in the right spot vertically. Now, let me move on to the next topic. Now, you see earlier that in 3D space, you have the XY plane, you have the XZ plane, and you have the YZ plane. The XY plane can be be described using the equation z equal to zero. The xz plan can be described using y equal to zero. And the yz plan can be described using the equations x equal to zero. Now, if you have the plan in space that is parallel to the xy plan, and this plan, the new plan, containing the point a, b, and c, then it can be represented by the equations z equal to c. Right? Again, z equal to c is going to be parallel to the xy plane or the plane z equal to zero. Now, similarly, if you have the plane in space that is parallel to the xz plane and contains the point a, b, and c, then the new plan can be described using the equations y equal to b. And for the last case, if the plane in space is parallel to the yz plan containing the point a, b, and c, it can be described or represented by the equations x equal to a. So again, z equal to c is parallel to the plane z equal to zero, y equal to b is going to be uh, parallel to the plan y equal to zero and x equal to a is the plan that is parallel to the line to the plan x equal to zero uh, so in this pictures that you see right here what you see this is the case of one dimensional line this is the case of two dimensional grid or two dimensional plan and this three picture represent the three dimensional space where you have this one to be the yz plane this one is the xy plane and this one is the xz plane so let me describe this so this is 2d line this is 3d plane this is 3d space with the yz plan this is also 3d space with x y plan and this is 3d space with xz plan um, so again the definitions that we see earlier about the plan in space parallel to the xy plane, the xz plane, and the yz plane, and containing the point a, b, and c, um, they have a different representation depends on where or what plane that they are parallel to. So let's consider the following example. We want to write an equation of the plane through the point 6, negative 2, 9, and is parallel to the xy plane. Right? So the xy plane Again, z equal to zero. 
and the plan that you are looking for in terms of equations containing the point 6 comma negative 2 comma 9 the plan so the plan that is parallel to the xy plan containing 6 negative 2 9 is z equal to 9 okay so the plan z equal to 9 is parallel to the plan z equal to 0 now in the case of the xz plan is y equal to 0 so the plan that is parallel to the xz plan containing the point 6 negative 2 9 is going to be y equal to negative 2 so the plan that is parallel to the xz plan containing the point 6 negative 2 9 is y equal to negative 2 now for the last case the case of yz plan so yz plan this is where x equal to 0 so the plane that is parallel to the yz plane containing the point 6, negative 2, 9 is going to be x equal to 6. Uh, so again, I mentioned earlier, eventually we get to a lecture where we dive a little bit into more detail about how to write an equation of the plan um, but for now this is the simplest form of a plan that you can come up with now moving on to the next topic you want to find the distance between the two points in space so the distance d between two points in space is given by the following formula and you will see that this is going to be very similar to how you find the distance between two points in a 2D plane. So the distance is going to be equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. So if you stop right here, this is going to be the distance between the two points in the plane. But now you need to add the third component into the calculations to indicate that these points are the three-dimensional points or the points in 3D space. So z2 minus z1. And this equation is the equation that allows us to find the distance between two points in space. So in example 3, we want to find the distance between two points, 3, negative 1, 5, and 2, 1, negative 1. Um, you can just go ahead and use the formula we just obtained um, and get the distance between the two points. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a practice again, try to locate these two points on the 3D space. So first, I'm going to try with the point 3, negative 1, and 5. So for x equal to 3, I'm going to start at the origin and go into the positive x directions to 3. And from there, I'm going to draw a line that is going to be parallel to the y-axis, but I'm going to draw that to the left because y is equal to negative 1. I just draw a line like that. And on the y-axis, I'm going to go to negative 1. So this is negative 1. And from negative 1, I'm going to draw the line that's going to, it's going to be parallel to the x-axis. And this line is going to intersect the blue line at the point, and that point is going to be 3, negative 1, comma 0. Again, we haven't talked about the z-axis yet, so that's why the point 3, negative 1, 0 is on the xy plane, and therefore the z-value is equal to 0. Now, from after locating the point 3, negative 1, 0, you're going to draw a like segment connecting the origins in these points. 
you have the light segment in red. Now the light segment consists of two ends. One end is at the origin, the other end is at the point three negative one zero. From the origin, you're going to go up to the z-axis by five units. It doesn't show here in our axis, but I'm just going to assume this is positive five. Okay. And from positive z equal to positive 5, I'm going to draw the line that is going to be parallel to the red line that I see here. And from the uh, the end of the red line, line, the red line segment, I'm going to draw a line, the vertical line that is going to parallel to be parallel to the z axis. And this line is going to intersect the original line at the point, and that point is going to be 3, negative 1, positive 5. So I could be able to locate one point there, 3, negative 1, and positive 5. Now let's move on to the second point, 2, 1, and negative 1. So when x equal to 2, I'm going to start at the origins. I'm going to go into 2 in the positive x directions. I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to draw a line that is going to be parallel to the y-axis. So here. Here. I'm going to draw that in the um, positive directions because y is equal to 1 in this case. In addition to that, when we're going to move along the y-axis go to y equal to 1, and from there I'm going to draw the line that's going to be parallel to the x-axis. And the purple line is going to intersect the blue line at one point, and that point is going to be the point 2, 1, 0. And then what you do is that from the origin, you're going to draw a like segment connecting the origin with the point 2, 1, 0. So again, the red line right now is connecting the two points have again two ends. One is at the origin um, and the other one is at 2, 1, 0. So from the origin, I'm going to go to the z-axis in the negative direction because z is equal to negative 1. So I assume that this is going to be here, negative 1. And from there, I'm going to draw the line that's going to be parallel to the red line that we just obtained earlier. I'm going to draw the line like this. And from the point to 1, 0, I'm going to draw a vertical line that is going to be parallel to the z-axis. And the two lines are going to intersect at one point, and that point is 2, 1, negative 1. And we just locate the two points uh, in 3D space. And from there, we can calculate the distance between these two points. So let me draw a line connecting these two points together. And then the distance between these two points can be calculated as follows. So d is equal to square root of 2 minus 3 square plus 1 minus negative 1 square plus negative 1 minus 5 square. So 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1, so negative 1 square plus 2 square plus negative 6 square. And this is a straightforward calculation, and if you do the calculations correctly, you're going to get the value of the distance to be square root of 41. In the next topic, I want to write down the equation of a sphere. So a sphere with center A, B, C, and the radius R can be represented by the equations x minus A square plus y minus B square. If you set this equal to R squared, then you have the equation of a circle into the plan. But since you are in 3D space, you're going to add the extra component here, z minus c squared. And that is the equation of a sphere. This equation is called the standard equation of a sphere. Okay.
So hopefully it's straightforward for us. Now the in the next example, we want to write the equation of sphere in standard form that satisfies the given information. You have a center which is a equal to negative one, b equal to seven, and c equal to four, and the radius equal to four. So here you have x minus negative one square plus y minus seven square plus z minus four square plus equal to four square right so that is the equation of the sphere in standard form um you can rewrite this a little bit simplify this a little bit to get the answer so x plus one altogether square plus y minus seven square plus z minus four square equal to 16. and again this is the equation of a sphere in standard form In the next example, you have the center of negative 1, 7, and 4, and the point on the sphere is to be negative 4, 7, and 2. So what is missing from this information is the radius of a sphere. But remember, you have a center and you have a point on the sphere. Again, it's very similar to what you do with the circle, how to find the radius of the circle. To find the radius of a sphere, you just basically find the distance between the center and the point on the sphere. Right. So the radius is equal to the distance between these two points. So it's equal to the square root of negative 4 minus negative 1 square plus 7 minus 7 square plus 2 minus 4 square. And if you do the cal calculations correctly, you get the radius to be equal to square root of 13. So the equations of the sphere in uh, standard form is you have x minus negative 1 square plus y minus 7 square plus z minus 4 square equal to r square that is square root of 13 square you can manipulate the result a little bit to get to the final answer you get x plus 1 square plus y minus 7 square plus z minus 4 square equal to 13 so that is the answer now let's move on to vectors in three-dimensional space.